This episode of Shinden starts out with Itachi's father being a total douche. That's not just me saying it, that's a fact. He's congratulating Itachi for awakening the Sharingan at the age of eight, at such an early age, right? But at the same time, he's also neglecting, not taking into consideration, the traumatic event that he had to go through in order to awaken it. It's kind of like if somebody were to congratulate you for being assaulted. It's like, hey, congratulations on awakening this new power, man. Yeah, yeah, we kind of know that you got assaulted, you went through a rough time, we don't really care about that. We don't care about your emotional experience or the trauma that that experience left you with. No, all we care about is what you can do for the clan. Your productivity, your utility for the clan, that's what we care about, so congratulations. So if your friend died, it's okay because you can always make more friends. And so Itachi forces himself to smile and wave and he leaves and you can tell that he's just thinking, all right then, dad, goodbye. I'm totally not gonna murder you later on in the series, asshole. So you can kind of see Itachi's feelings of resentment towards his clan begin to build. And I do remember that like his dad, he was also kind of a douche to Sasuke. When he was growing up, it's kind of like, like the way he treated little Sasuke is like, you need to earn my affection because Itachi's a genius and you need to be on the same level as your brother. So until you're there, until you earn that, then I'll, I'll become a good parent. And then the rest of the episode is just like sort of there to develop the friendship and brotherly bond. It turns into a brotherly bond by the end of the episode between Shizui or Shizui and Itachi. And so I thought, I thought it's interesting because they, they break into the Forbidden Forest and so they're, they're tracking this dude, this fugitive, and these anime always make me feel like I can do things in the real world when it's actually not true. So they know how to track this guy. Shizui is an expert tracker. He can look at sticks, he can look at rocks. It's an amazing quality, an amazing skill to have. So in the back of my head, I'm like, wow, this episode is teaching me, it's teaching me how to cook fish, how to make a campfire, how to track criminals. When the truth of the matter is, if I were to go out in the forest, I'd probably be eaten by a bear. But all those things are just a bunch of bullshit because in all honesty, the main purpose of this training exercise, uh, in addition to fostering the friendship, is to also get the kids, specifically Itachi, introduced to the Ambu. And the, not just the Ambu, but the shady, the shady side of like, you know, Konoha security. So I start fighting, Itachi takes on this chick, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, like, I wonder who's gonna win. No, no, come on, it was it was so obvious. But the thing is, like, the Ambu for me, it's always been like a fucking joke. Like, with a few exceptions, like, Itachi's not a joke, Shizui's not a joke, I don't think Kakashi's a joke, and then by the end of this episode, we see Yamato there. So there's a few exceptions, but for, for the most part, like, the Ambu's really shitty. Like, it's just, it's not all it's hyped up to be. I really liked how Shizui's shotting gun looked in this episode throughout the entire time that it was activated. Uh, so I appreciated that. But then when I look to, like, when, when Itachi started using his, it's kind of like, I don't know if they changed the artist or the animator or what the hell, but his eyes looked very different from shot to shot. They were all over the place. And I think you would need to pause the episode or the fight a little bit more to see what I mean. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just something that really stuck out to me. The assignment ends and, you know, the Joning interfere because they're like, oh, by the way, the, the Joning weren't even fucking paying attention to what was going on. They're horrible, horrible Joning. Like, oh, that wasn't part of the exercise. What happened here? So whatever, fuck that shit. To me, that part of the episode was just like sort of like it was it was just meh. Like, ugh. ugh. If you liked it, I get what I why you would like it, but I just thought it was that was absolutely mediocre. But the thing that I really liked about this episode is that, again, I've said this before. They turned Shizui, or Shizui, into this this brotherly figure for Itachi, and I didn't know that that was the case, because first of all, I did not know what the age gap was between Itachi and Shizui, uh, or Shizui, and so I was kind of like, oh wow, so he's actually like this older brother. So in a way, he is teaching Itachi how to be an older brother to Sasuke throughout the ending of this episode. Not only that, but everything that Shizui says to Itachi, you can tell it's having a huge impact on who his character will be in the future because uh, Shizui tells him, like, no matter what happens, Itachi, I will never betray you, which is something that Itachi pretty much takes to the grave because even though he, he killed the entire clan, he was not able to kill Sasuke. He was not able to betray Sasuke in that form. But also, in terms of Itachi's ideology that he adopts later on, that's straight from Shizui. Because Shizui tells him, I don't really know if there's such a thing as justice, because both sides think that they're fighting for what's just and what's right. So who's right at the end? And that's why he tells him, you need to consider, you need to start considering different points of view. Which, at the end of the day, that's what Itachi just says. Like, everybody lives their life according to what they think is true and right. So according to this, and I don't know if this is canon or not, or we, we can consider it like partly canon or whatever, 
But this kind of explains where Itachi got his philosophy and ideology from, to a certain extent. Uh, that being said, there's a time skip. He joins the Anbu. That's how the episode ends. I'm not really sure if next week we're going to get the Uchiha Massacre or if it's the week after that. But regardless, we'll, we'll, we'll get Donzo, you know, giving him, like, shady instructions. Uh, I thought the episode was decent. Please tell me your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you did. I appreciate that. It keeps me motivated. Thank you so much for subscribing and all the stuff you do. Catch you guys later. Bye.